much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you don't know. Thank you so much. That's very nice. I didn't expect that. Uh, can you hear me in the back? Okay, I, um, I'm going to be uh, talking tonight about the immune system. Of course, all of you know how important the immune system is. Uh, why should I be standing here in front of some people already know about the immune system? It's only to give you documentation and give you uh, like a feedback on the last uh, almost 30 years in practice. What, what happened to, in my practice using uh, the nutrition, Shackley food supplements, plus uh, other medical management to the people I have in my practice. So when I come to speak about something like last time we spoke about cancer, I was trying to share with you my experience in my own patient, which I have seen you know, close to uh, maybe about 20,000 over these years, that what my experience is among these people, wh why, why they are so much success in preventing cancer and treating cancer, why so much success in allergies and fatigue and fibromyalgia, the stuff that we put in the, for the title tonight. And then uh, before I forget, which most likely I will, not because I don't take acuity, is because we, I get so busy, uh, the next two lectures, maybe you can take a note of it. We decided last night, me and Joyce, is going to be September 12, and that's going to be talking, we're going to talk about adrenal glands, thyroid gland, ovarian gland, and the pancreas, and male hormones, and the role of food supplements in those. Specifically, we're going to be talking thoroughly on B-complex and Vitalia. So the most of the lecture is going to revolve around B-complex and Vitalia, so you be prepared for that. I was going to do it tonight. I was going to do the B-complex with the immune system. I decided to take it out when I was driving here and put some other things in place of it because there's no, not, not enough time to talk about it. The second lecture is going to be on October 10th, and that's going to be on joints. Uh, we're going to talk about osteoporosis, prevention and treatment. We're going to talk about osteoarthritis, prevention and treatment. We're going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis, prevention and treatment, and we're going to talk about like things like back pains and things bother people in general. Specific product going to be discussed in that time will be calcium and vitamin D and alpha-alpha and pain relief complex and joint health and, uh, and vitamin D. All of this is going to be discussed at that time. So you can notice from the last lecture, uh, how many people here were here in the last lecture? You're, yeah. You notice from the last lecture what I did is I, I spoke about the cancer, but I put aside some time to speak about specific food supplement, all the benefit behind it. Basically, that was the first time in 30 years, first time in 30 years I ever done that. Even I told you last time you were here, I told you I written this stuff, 1999, 2000, and I want to do it 2000, but I forgot all about it until I was looking at my books. I said, oh my gosh, I didn't tell people about this stuff. Then I decided to be disciplined and carry it with me and said, okay, I'm going to read it for them, you know, and I did last time. And lots of you, uh, you know, lots of you called me and uh, complimented that and enjoyed that because it meant a lot to you and meant a lot also to the people you help. Uh, I want to tell you that this lecture intended for, for me as sponge for knowledge. I have so many degrees, and just like a sponge, I take knowledge and transfer it to you so you can, you can go out as a sponge and help other people. So you basically, you're going to become the doctors in society. It takes only a few people to help the world. It takes only a few people to destroy the world, you know. So you're going to have to do your share, uh, you know, may God reward you for it. So today we're going to be talking about the immune system. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, basically, um, I'm going to, uh, I have 
lots of slides right here, but I'm going to ignore it to give you some background on the immune system itself. And we talked about some of it last time. The, the human body is made of, let me just get a different slide. I need uh, just uh, Um, the human body is made of organs, like Bill says, the skeleton, which is made of bones, and those bones have functions to the body. Their function is to secrete white blood cells that is important in the immune system. Uh, I will speak slowly, and if you, uh, if you have any question, uh, you can hold it to in the end of the lecture. The lecture will be about one hour and 10 minutes, and then we're going to have about 10 to 15 minutes for question and answer. And then I'm going to leave my phone number for you. Uh, it's only because I don't stay longer time because I had surgery in my left knee. So I will speak like hour and a half, and then I have to go because I couldn't stand on it more than an hour and a half at one time. So, uh, and, and that's the role of nutrition because I only had the major surgery four weeks ago. So last time when you saw me here, when I stopped because I had pain and I had to go, you know. So this, uh, why, this bone uh, is made of many units of cells. And the, this, bo this body is covered with skin. And each organ has a function. Remember, if one organ malfunction, you will have a disease. Like if the skin malfunction, what we will have? Psoriasis, lupus, uh, aging, and all of that stuff. Are you follow me? Cancer. Uh, uh, so many people don't understand that nutrition has a lot to do uh, with, with the skin. You know, your condition of your skin depends on what you put inside those cells. And the skin also made of cells. You, you know, we don't have to write another cell. You follow, you follow me? Okay. And then inside the body, there are organs that your survival depend on it. And those organs are, the first one is the heart, number one. And he sends the blood all over the body. And that also, the function of, the, there are five vital organs, the heart, the lung, the liver, the kidney, and the brain. Without any of those, your life will be over. The rest of the organs, they are for fun, uh, for walking, for enjoyment, for uh, enjoying life. Are you following me or no? So when, when a patient comes to me to want to be checked, uh, well, lots of you were in my clinic and you know how I am. The first thing I concentrate circulation right away. The heart and circulation. I want to have good circulation in that person. If I give him Shackley vitamins, I give him good circulation, then I'm going to have eventually good results. Are you following me? And that is the reason I became a cardiologist, actually. Uh, when I finished in Chicago Medical School and I was uh, finishing internal medicine, with, and I Thank God, of course, that I was the top resident in, in, the, in the school. Uh, they ask you, the top resident, first, what do you want to be? What do you want to become? You know, because the fellowship program is limited to one or two people go to the fellowship. Not everybody can go to fellowship. So they ask me, what do you want? Every department tried to impress me. said, we are on cancer, you can be with us. The lung, you can be with us. The intestine, you can be with us. The brain, you can be with us. And the heart can be with us. I said to myself, which one I should go to? I said, if I can have good nutrition, which I'm a biochemist, I know that, I can do that. And I can have good circulation to my patients, I achieved 90% of my results. Uh, so this organ also made of cells, and those cells also need to be functioning properly. So we're going to concentrate today on the, uh, on the continuation of last lecture. If I told you, when I told you last lecture, that this cancer lecture 
going to continue in the immune lecture. Do you remember that? OK, so we are continuing right there. Right there. there are the second organs right here made of, uh, some people don't have, but made of also cells right there. Uh, you know, I, the reason I said some people don't have, because when I was having dinner last night, uh, Joyce called me. And she was talking to me, and she was asking me a question about, that she knows the answer of it anyway. Uh, is the soy protein, uh, you know, so somebody is telling people soy protein uh, is not good for people, you know? And what do I think? Then I said, uh, you know, I, how do I answer that question when I know that person who said that, not her, others, all they need is a brain, you know? So these cells are missing in that person uh, because, 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 uh, when I, ha I hired a new doctor, he works for me, some of you might already have met him. His name is Dr. Kim from uh, Korea. He was a professor, he worked in Green Bay for nine years, then he went back to Korea, he was a professor of surgery and medical school for 23 years, then he came back again here, and then he had nothing else to do, so when I put an ad on, you know, and uh, I need a doctor, he was one of the applicants. So I hired him because he, he was the same age, and I can get along with people the same age than people who argue with me all the time. You know, so I want a, you know, older doctor. So as the doctor, I, seriously, I asked him the question in front of a patient. I said, Dr. Kim, you are the head of cancer for 23 years. Uh, and some people say in this country right now, in America, that soy protein is bad for you and it can cause cancer. What do you think? You remember, Dr. Kim, when he came for interview, he said, I know nothing about nutrition. You're going to have to teach me. And he said, that's what we recommend for people who have cancer, to give them soy protein. You see, the answer was the opposite. So, the, uh, so this kind of thing, there are people who are missing some cells right here, and we have to be careful with that. Uh, the, uh, the other organ, of course, inside the body is plenty. There's the lung we talked about, is made of, the, of, uh, of, uh, of cells. And the problem of that, of course, can lead to allergy and cough and asthma and all this stuff. And then there's an intestine made of cells. And the problem with that, you can have also colitis, Crohn's disease, and all these autoimmune diseases. And there is also kidneys right here. And the problem with that can lead to. The Wasatcha Freeman today said that. <sighs> Oh, it says what? Uh, I, I, did you read that? No, I just saw the headline. Oh, so, say soy protein surprisingly smart and delicious in the Waukesha Freeman. I don't know if that's a good or bad, but you know the, uh, all I know is that the, the news media attacks always food supplements, so I have to read that later on uh, to see. Uh, what's that? Helping with cancer. I'm glad you said that. You read it for me. That, I'm glad one newspaper in the country agreed with us. That's a blessing, you know. We have to thank God for that. So the intestine also made of cells. Problem with cells in the intestine can lead to ulcers, which is autoimmune disease and allergy and Crohn's disease and all of that stuff. And we're going to talk a lot about that today with the immune system because we're going to talk about up the floor and all that stuff in the process. Uh, there are all kinds of organs right here you can see. So the main thing is what, uh, what, the, what goes wrong with the cell uh, that, that lead to diseases like autoimmune? What is, what is allergy? It's an autoimmune. What is, uh, 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 you know, the uh, Parkinson is autoimmune. Uh, Crohn, all this disease is like an autoimmune. Like the immune system is confused, basically, as uh, is not doing the job, but attacking the body itself. You know, the, the, just attack the body itself. And uh, to make it simple for you, just you, you're never gonna forget that when I when, when you see this picture, the bones in the body have a bone marrow. Okay, everybody knows that. You're not gonna forget that. The bone marrow makes blood. Everybody knows that, right? Part of the blood called white blood cell. Everybody knows that. So you're not going to forget that. It doesn't matter if you take supplement or not. OK, those white blood cell have a specific code inside them 
which we talked about last time, exactly the same code of the mother cell called the mast cell inside the bone. It's like a social security number here, and each cell, each white blood cell, have the same number. You understand now how the immune work? Now, I'm sorry? Yeah, exactly. So the, 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 every cell in the body have the same code, exactly the same code, every cell. And those th cells in the body, they have DNA inside the nucleus right here, and they have the ability to go out and hunt uh, cancer cells, and they hunt allergy uh, products, and they hunt uh, uh, aging sp uh, stuff inside the body. Whatever thing they find is ir not good, they take. Uh, just some of you might know a little bit about uh, hematology. Uh, white blood cells are many kinds. There is the uh, granulocytes that they attack bacterias. There is the lymphocytes, they attack viruses. And there is the basophil, they attack heavy metals. The isonophil, they attack allergens. Yeah, are you following me or no? So God has specified, directed cells out for different functions. Uh, you, you, I'm, I'm sure you found that. So these cells, when they travel inside the, the veins of the body, when they travel, they identify themselves to all the cells surrounding them. They identify themselves because the wall of the the, the wall of the uh, of the vein right here of the artery is also made of what cells. And if the white blood cell attack the artery, which we see that in fibromyalgia and arthritis and migraine headache, then there is a problem. The patient will have pain and aches and throbbing headache and all kind of thing because something's attacking the, the arteries. We call that arthritis, not arthritis, but arthritis with, with the word artery, you know. So they identify themselves to each cell they pass by because each cell is supposed to have what? The same code, exactly. The problem is ha happens when the, some of the cells come out, they have different code. They have a different code in them. So when they travel in the body, where, wherever cell they see, they attack. You follow me? They attack everything they see. Some of them, we don't know until today why. Some of them attack only the skin. Uh, and we see that in, in psoriasis. And we see that also in skin lupus. Some attack the bone marrow. We see that in leukemia. Some attack the stomach. And we see that in cancer. Some attack the brain. We see that in Alzheimer. But it's all autoimmune related. It's attack, 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 inflammation, inflammation, inflammation that lead to secretion of all kinds of chemicals. And once, once the attack happens, once the attack happens, this means the whole body goes on fire. Then there is more problems through the body. Are you following me or no? Okay, so that's what the word autoimmune. Autoimmune, that you're creating a cell that auto automatically attacking itself. Okay, that's what the autoimmune diseases are. That's the reason we titled the lecture that way. Why is that? If we look at the cell itself, as we said in the last lecture, the cell actually is prepared. All human cells are prepared for any insult to it. They are prepared for that. From the last lecture, we said the first line of defense was the white blood cell, and the second line of defense, I said, the membrane. Remember that. We said the membrane is full of what? Omega-3 and vitamin E. And those have hands like this. They stick out. And once they see something coming bad, they grab it. And they put it inside right here. And they give it to another something inside the cell to eat it or destroy it or get rid of it. 
This is how the body detoxifies itself. You follow me? Okay. So this is the role of nutrition in the membrane. That's the second line of defense right here. Then we have the most important part went with, which went wrong, which I said in, uh, in here, I said the DNA, see I, I focused in the middle right here, remember that? That the DNA is the one get damaged in, uh, in the process. DNA is what's behind everything. Once you damage the DNA, you name it. Your kids will be sick, your grandkids will be sick, you're gonna be sick, and then you can correct it, as we said in the last lecture, from the American, uh, uh, the paper, from the American cardiology paper, which was published in 1996, which you, we, have, we had a copy of it right here last time, uh, that the body have inside the nucleus DNA right here, that if it gets damaged, there are bioflavonoids inside the cell specialized of correcting the damage. So I want to put that in the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning of the lecture rather than the end of the lecture. Usually I give you the, what to do in the end, so I'm putting it from the beginning right now. The, D, the DNA, because it's so important, the DNA is so important to us, I'm sure you know, everybody knows that, is surrounded by another wall with things in it like that, omega-3 also like this, with hands like that. So if the chemical succeeded of entering through, it will have a difficult time getting through to the DNA. You, you, you understand how, how important it is, how we created? Okay, now, what, what went wrong with this person right here? What did go wrong with this person? Let me tell you what went wrong. What went wrong with that person is we see an autoimmune disease mostly in developed countries. We do not see autoimmune like Crohn's, lupus, psoriasis, cancer, or all these things in what we call third world countries or primitive countries. We don't see that. Actually, some of you might have traveled in South America, Central America, and Africa, and wonder how can these people be alive, walking barefooted, eating, drinking muddy water, and all of that, and surviving where we have a difficulty treating cancer and fibromyalgia and all of this, and we have all the money, we have all the wealth, and those guys have nothing, and they got their health. You understand or no? Our goal with these lectures is to bring that health back. You know, that's what we do these lectures for. The, when we look to study for the last century, the amount of uh, diseases in our society, like cancer and lupus and autoimmune disease and heart and arthritis, and you name it, has gone up. That's true or not true? It is true. And then it doesn't take any genius brain to think about it that we are in trouble. So you have to think with yourself and ask yourself a question and ask your government questions and ask your, your society why we have so much. And they tell you we don't know. Let me tell you the answer to that. We also noticed there is also increase in the amount of chemical in our water. There is increase of the amount of chemical in our air. There is increase of amount of chemical in our food. Is that true or not? Can this contribute to that? For years, they say no. I remember one time I was flying from Los Angeles going to Memphis, Tennessee to give a lecture, and I was reading in the newspaper of the city, it says that some people claim that food additives are bad for you. As a matter of fact, food additives are good for you. And then I, I, last lecture I told you also that there is, there is a systemic attack going on right now against nutrition in the United States. Gradual attack. 
One against beta carotene one time, another vitamin another time, another soy protein another time. And you never know, maybe vitamin C will be attacked and, and everything will be attacked. And some people even write right now that people who take food supplements are going to be sicker than the people who eat chemicals. I read that in a medical journal, actually, that the doctors read. I have no idea why the brain cells were missing in those people when they wrote the article. <laughs> I don't know, but I read it and I said, is this intentional or accidental? Because, you know, when I see every gas station have the same price, I said, is this accidental or intentional? Are you following me? There is a pattern here when we look, we say, wait a minute, there's something going wrong here, and when they say, uh, the reason it went up by 50 cents is because this reactor is this, this is, there's a storm, it rained in Milwaukee that day, it, 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 there was a lightning in Los Angeles that day. You know, come on, you know, we're not that dumb to figure that you guys playing with our brain. But they don't care. They really don't care. Uh, because, uh, I, as I told you last time, about 10, uh, I think it was about 10, 15 years ago when the tobacco company was on trial in, the, in front of the Senate. And the, the, the executives were laying back, three of them, and they had their shoes like on the desk. And they look at the senators between the shoes. And they say, yeah, we did it. What can you do about it? How arrogant can you become? That is, if you and me say that, we'd be in jail. Right? But they know themselves. They bought these guys in their pocket who ask them the questions. Because after that, they told him, we're going to penalize you uh, like $700 billion or whatever ridiculous number. We have a lawyer right there. He can, uh, you remember that. $700 billion is a lot of money to me. I said, oh my gosh, the company bankrupt. How can you do that? They are oh, no problem. We're just going to increase the price of cigarettes. So they, they don't get, so things are really, it seems like the more, chemicals we have, the more disease we have, the more drugs we use, the more the hospital is full, they have a cycle that we have, we, we have a consumers, we have customers always getting sick. You can imagine if you all succeed of getting healthy. What's going to happen to Akasha Memorial Hospital and Cook County Hospital, all the hospital? They're going to close. So everybody have to defend themselves somehow. What are these people doing? Uh, last year, I think it was last year or the year before, I went to, to get my degree in holistic medicine, which I heard about there is a degree in holistic medicine. So I went to get it. It was in Austin, Texas, and it was about like a, a 10 days course that you study for 12 hours a day and all of that. And you meet all these doctors coming from all over to learn about nutrition. And, and then, you know, I, I, I discovered there are many doctors who are worried about the same thing I worry about. What's going to happen to this society if we continue to have this problem? One of the big problems they told us about it, they worry so much about how many people visiting chiropractors, how many people visiting holistic doctors like my clinic, how many people going to the holistic route, preventive route. We must prevent it somehow. So most of the physicians who have a license to practice and they practice preventive medicine in the Chicago area, they lost their licenses. And in Milwaukee here, the same thing. In Green Bay, the same thing. Maybe in Los Angeles, too, and other places. They will find any reason. Like I go to, I go to be questioned in front of the board every single year for the last 25 years. And the question is the same. You, uh, you give vitamins to people, how much Shackley Vitamin g Company gave you, what do you take this, you know, silly questions, but they know. Once they call you, you have to hire a lawyer, you have to pay a $5,000 retainer, so they drain you economically so you can give up. When you don't give up, then they said, okay, cancel the license. By the time you fight in court, and takes you, you, every physician will win in court, of course, uh, that two years later, his practice is gone. You follow me? 
So that is what's happening in the medical problem right now. So can these chemicals right here contribute to the disease or not? OK. Then we look at the food we eat. The food we eat. We find there is a problem there, too. The, we have deficiency of vitamins. It went down. The amount of vitamins antioxidant in food went down. Is that true or not true? Everybody knows that. But if you're one of those people missing a few cells, then I can show you the proof I have right here. The, so the vitamin amount went down. The mineral amount went down. And the consumption of water went down. The exercise went down. And the fibers went down. And that can that also cause the disease? Uh, and can this in conjunction with chemical cause disease? Then we have other things that we see in society that we don't pay attention to it. That is, that's one example right here. This article right here, it says, flame retardant founded in many foods. And if you look closer to it, if you look real close to it, you will see right here, some place it says it's found in 100% of mother milks right here. You see that? Yeah. If you cannot see it in, in, in the DVD, well, you can see it. Imagine 100% of mother milk have flame retardant. Does it take any brain to think that chemical can cause problem or no? Yeah. And we wonder about autoimmune disease. Why didn't we just stop the flame retardant? Because the flame retardant company won't allow it to be taken out. Because everybody, when I go, when I go to Washington, D.C., and I, 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 I got my Physician of the Year Award last month when I went to there, and then I meet all these people, everybody have, have interest. Everybody is there for something they want for themselves. Ex ask the physicians, we were together in one side, and the rest of them, the, some want this, some want that, some want this, some want that. And we physicians, we were there talking about the national health, the environment pollution, the food supplement, the disease. All the physicians were talking about the same issue I'm talking about tonight. But the rest were talking about uh, what they can, how much they can pay and what, what they do for, for politicians. And, uh, and this is a pro one problem right here. Another problem right here, I'm going to show you another one that it says right here, reactive oxygen species. What does reactive oxygen species mean? It means free radicals. free radicals. And free radicals can cause problems, can cause disease, right? That's what they call free radical. We, we talked about that many times. So here we have in the air, we have all these free radicals. And each one of them is capable of penetrating that cell, if we can find it. Well, anyway, it's someplace around here. Right here. It's able to penetrate the free radical right here and could destroy here and could destroy here, and can go inside destroy there. You, un you understand how free radicals, they are very powerful, very aggressive. So this is how many free radicals we have in, in the air. We identified so many. What can we do against it again? In previous lecture, we take anti-oxidant for that. Then look at this uh, picture of the nuclear fall out in the United States. So I just wanted to show you and show also the people who defend nuclear 
uh, reactors and all of this thing and all that, that we are in danger. We are in danger from all the nuclear storage in this country. Did you hear about the train that flipped over in some state and they were all, the cars were full of plutonium and it didn't come out? The, what's the half-life of plutonium? One million year. You know, come on, you know. It, we, it's only one earth, it's only one God. What does it take to us to understand that we don't have another planet to go to? You know, so what happened in Savannah, Georgia, make a nuclear bomb to hit, to hit Japan, the people of Georgia and around state now are still suffering from all the nuclear waste that was stored in cardboard boxes by the company who's making the bombs until 19... Uh, 96, when they, uh, when they when was exposed and they brought it in lit boxes when 2020 brought it in the news. And nobody dared to talk because it's top secrets. You follow me? One scientist did not like that. And he put his life in the line. And may God bless him and give him whatever he is, lots of peace. He came out in 2020 and exposed that. I didn't know that. So I exposed it to people in lectures. And I was harassed for that. But I didn't care. Because after that, I went to get a degree in nuclear physics to, to be able to understand the radi radiation. And then I said, oh my gosh, I keep asking my, my professor at the University of Chicago, I didn't know this that bad, you know, because I didn't know radiation really. And then that's the nuclear fallout. The, the yellow is what? Moderate. What does the word moderate mean? It's a little and moderate and severe. Is moderate dangerous or not? Yes. You, you follow me? Yes. If you have severe headache, moderate headache, and little headache. You know, moderate is still headache. It's still a problem. And nobody say anything about it. We need to clean this environment. We can. We can clean our air right here. We can actually, number one, prevent anybody putting anything in the air. Number two, we can encourage the people to take lots of food supplement anti-radiation because this is also free radicals. Especially thyroid cancer is an increase from that right now. So this is what we are exposed to. And I... I hate to say this, but there are some people in denial. They don't want to believe that, that there is a problem in our environment that we should do something about it. There was another one right here, but I cannot find it, but it doesn't matter. But we, the, the main point is, the main point is all of these chemicals eventually is going to affect the cells. The cells. The cell of the body, it look like that. This is what a human cell looks like. And I drew a picture earlier. It doesn't look as nice as this. <laughs> but that shows you that the cell have arms to defend itself. That shows you it has a nucleus. It shows you it has a membrane. It, shows, it has omega-3 in it, and then if you have a chemical, we're able to penetrate the wall here, and penetrate the cell, and penetrate the nucleus, and penetrate the DNA, we will have mutation, or we have what we call an autoimmune disease. And this problem can happen in any cell. We have cells right here. Uh, in different parts. It can happen in the kidney, it can happen in other organs. Uh, we have different cells that they have different shapes and uh, we have different cells, they have different shapes and things like that, different functions, but they all are cells and they all get attacked the same way. So when I studied this problem, I discovered another thing that is also uh, disturbing that there are four different factors causes autoimmune disease. 
either your parents give it to you, genetic mutation. So the mother who have headache, migraine, gives the daughter have headache, and so on. The mother who have cancer, the father gives the children have cancer, diabetes, and so on. And the other thing we talked about last lecture, the protein and the carbohydrate and the fat and the vitamins and the water and the mineral uh, and, uh, and the fibers, all of these things we missed with it. So rather than have the, having the right kind of protein, which is uh, fish and soy, protein, the consumption of animal protein went sky high. The consumption of vegetable protein went down. Can this also cause the disease, we talk, autoimmune disease we talked about? Can this also, in conjunction with the lack of vitamins uh, and more chemicals, cause more disease? So we have a pattern right here that we have eaten the wrong protein. Then we ate too much the wrong carbohydrate. The whole wheat consumption went down, the, the complex carbohydrate, and the sugar went up. Can this also cause the same pattern or no? We don't have to keep bringing the curves all the time because you get tired of it. So, so that is protein. The fat, the consumption of saturated fat and lard and all that went up, fried food and all the stuff, the consumption of unsaturated fatty acid like olive oil and good oils went down. Is that true or not? So we have, we have a problem with fat. The amount of vitamins, we already talked about that, went down and mineral went down. And the consumption of good water went down. The consumption of bad water like Coke and beer went up. Right or wrong? So don't just think I know everything. You know the same as much as I do about how to solve this problem. And if we don't work together, we lose this country to a bunch of selfish, greedy uh, capitalists that they don't care about anything except money. Because themselves, they don't care even if to die. They're just so selfish about it. I, I sit in meetings, and I cannot believe how people don't care about what goes around. So having lack of protein and vitamins and all of the good stuff that we're supposed to have, we can reverse that. We can eat more soy protein and fish. We can eat more whole wheat and whole grains and all this stuff. We can eat more olive oils and all of these things. We can take more vitamins, uh, good quality vitamin like Shackley. We can drink best water or water that have reverse osmosis that remove the chemical from it. We can take minerals and eat fibers. Is that difficult? It's not difficult for lots of you. You've done it already. You follow me? So all we do, we want to teach the younger generation, the kids and the grandkids, that when they eat in the school, when they eat outside, they remember what goes in, it does not come out. What goes in, stays in. Are you understand or not? In the human body, it's not what goes in, comes out. No, it doesn't. What goes in, it has to destroy something to come out. So if you smoke, if you inhale a cigarette, for the nicotine to come out, it has to be carried out with vitamin C. If you, if you, that's how the body works. So th these things right here is easy to change. Another factor is the stress with autoimmune. The more stress you, you have, the more autoimmune is developed. Why is that? Because, because during stress, Do in stress, the heart speeds up, the brain speeds up. There is some degree of anxiety that is under stress. And the whole body works so hard to fight back stress. In the process, it burns what? Food and produces more free 
radicals. And the more free radical needs more vitamin C and E and antioxidant to get rid of it. And if there is more deficiency, there is more free radical accumulation, then we have more disease, we have more autoimmune disease. So stress is very destructive to the body. Stress, you know, it comes, usually stress comes from within. If you have deficiency, you cannot tolerate stress. But stress also can be caused from people around you. Uh, if you surround yourself with people who always complain, you're going to have problems. Uh, because, you know, everything, you want to hear something neg- positive, and all they talk about in the conversation, negative, negative, negative. And have you ever seen those people that you talk to them after a while, after arguing, they drain your energy out of you? And you go to sleep tired? That's the person you want to get rid of. <laughs> and how do you get rid of in the same house? You can't. So what you do, you think about one thing, what I say tonight. Think about yourself as number one. If you don't take care of number one, you're not good for number two or three or four. And anybody who's hurt number one is the enemy of number one. You follow me or no? So you got to put rules and regulation in your job, in your family, in it, that me first, if you distract, destroy me, I'm not going to be replaced. So that is what you have to think about stress. Stress affects the whole body. We don't have to go through that because we covered it in the last lecture. So can deficiency, uh, can stress cause disease or not? Autoimmune disease. Right here. Not AIDS. Autoimmune disease, not AIDS. Okay? Autoimmune disease. And lack of bad protein and lack of good carbohydrate also can cause that, and genetic can cause that. And toxicity also, toxicity can lead to autoimmune disease. We already talked about that. So now, if we have autoimmune disease, which we do, Crohn's disease and rheumatoid arthritis and cancer, Alzheimer's, can we reverse it? I didn't know that 30 years ago. 30 years ago, I had a PhD, finished PhD in biochemistry. I didn't know anything about medicine. So when people ask me, uh, Shackley, when I was met with Dr. Shackley in San Francisco, I was just finishing my PhD. And then, he, you know, and I appreciate what he's doing, so I was talking to him about the quality of his product. That's what I was talking about. I was asking him, how, is, how does he make his vitamins? Is it good or bad and things like that? Because as a biochemist, I was talking to another chemist, and that's all I know. But people keep asking me questions. I have uh, cancer, I have heart disease, I have this, I have that. What should I do? I had no idea what to do. I told him, just take vitamins, just take vitamins, just take vitamins. That's all I know. Then I had to go to medical school and became an internist and all of that to learn that it, maybe it is possible that we can reverse disease. So in my practice, like I said in the last lecture, we have the lowest percentage of cancer patients in any practice in the whole country. And most of them are Shackley people. Okay, not only that, when they develop cancer, which I suggest to all of you, lots of the people who take vitamins don't get good physicals. They think taking the vitamins and minerals, all that is enough. Believe me, a chemical can cause mutation in your body when you're taking vitamins too, and you should be checked for cancer. Uh, and we have the lowest percentage of uh, Crohn's disease. As a matter of fact, we have, we have a witness right here that her friend in the, there she had was bleeding from her Crohn all the time. And she's, she, she knows that because we both know that. And then we said, we got to do something about that nutritionally. We got to do something about that. You cannot take the bowels out. They want to take them out. You cannot do that. We have to fight back. Well, this is the first two, three years of my practice. You know, I didn't know what to do. So all I said, let's get more protein. Let's do this. Let's do that. All the stuff we're, we're saying right here. And then within about a couple, two, three years, the disease went dormant. And many other patients the same way. 
we have very low incidence of allergy. None of my patients take allergy shots. None. Do they sneeze? Yeah, they do, like everybody else does. But they don't have to take allergy shot. They can be taken omega-3, they can be taken vitamin, they can be taken zinc. They, we're going to talk a little bit about supplements in the, close to the end of the lecture. It's already one hour. I can't believe that. Uh, I better hurry up. <laughs> no wonder my knees are stiff. <laughs> I go like this. I said, is it there or not? <laughs> OK. Anyway, I just want to tell you that in my practice, I have found that the allergy, it's almost non-existent. My patient eats anything they want. They're not on a special diet. They take the food supplements. They, uh, they just live normal life without being strict. I must drink soy, this, I drink this. I don't want to drink milk. I don't want to do That's not true. They eat anything they want. The only reason the milk, how we have a problem with it, is because the hormones added to it. That's the only reason. And because it's not really raw milk, it is boiled milk, which causes problem in digestion. But raw milk, you know, it doesn't cause that. I lived in a farm. I used to remember when in, in the farm in Egypt, when my mom, we have all these boys running around her, and she milking the cow, and she directed the stuff in your mouth like this. You open the mouth like kids, and, uh, and we feel the warm and the froth, and we love it. We, none of us had diarrhea, none of us had the problem with allergy to milk. Because your body is get used to anything environmental around you. Who created the milk? It's God. It's for us. Some people say, no, it's only for calves. Well, you can say this about the meat also. We should not eat cows or chicken because they're supposed to be for somebody else. <laughs> or, or the eggs only to hatch. We're not supposed to consume eggs. That's not true. Everything around us healthy is good for us. You follow me? You understand? Don't be fanatic about your diet. Believe me, you can stop in the highway and go to McDonald's and look at the menu and get a salad and use the clean bathroom and get a glass of water or something and you enjoy yourself. You don't have to cal get your diet from your purse and calculate and pour all of the stuff. And I look right there to restaurants, I shake my head, and I feel sorry for these people. I don't bother them. I said, that's their problem. Uh, because they're not, you know, I don't know them, so I don't want to start uh, arguing conversation. Uh, because, you know, once you start something, you better finish it. And I don't want to start anything. I said, good, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, like I, I said about 20 years ago, I said when you argue with something about vitamins and uh, nutrition, tell them, okay, you, you do your way, I do my way. In 10 years, if we're still alive, we meet again, then we'll see which one is healthier. That's the one way you can convince people about supplement. And then you also tell them, when you're on the grave and I pass by you, I really don't care <laughs> because you are dead and I'm alive and I have things to do, you know? Uh, you know, the, that is the problem people don't think about disease. We physicians worry so much about death, about disease, because we see it all the time. We see gorgeous people, and they gone to nothing. It could be prevented. It's right here. We have the, the lowest death rate of any disease, except for the people who come too late. Sometimes we cannot fight back. Only God can cure them anyway, not me. So I'm going to, unfortunately, all the slides I have right here are going to be wasted. So I'm going to just show you, uh, I go very fast, I show you that uh, the age of spots that we put that picture a lots of times on the screen that you see in your body are free radicals. And your bone marrow will have the same thing. That and also chronic inflammation or the uh, autoimmune disease can lead to all these diseases you see in front of you. So autoimmune disease can lead to cancer, can lead to this and that and that. And we, 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 can't, we don't have the time to go through each one of those. Um, the age of spots themselves inside the cells, they look like that, sludge buildup. And then our job is to get rid of it, take it out. And that's our free radicals. And then we have 
from the American Journal of Medicine right here, that the one I was talking about earlier, the information came out right here in this article that you probably don't know what it means anyway. Uh, it, this curve right here, it's actually, they measure the amount of vitamin C, they give chemicals to the person, give them lots of vitamin C, they saw vitamin C going down all the time with chemicals coming in all the time. So that proved that vitamin C was fighting chemical. That was the experiment right here. We, uh, we know that the immune system have a job to do, which is to fight back. And the immune system, the white blood cells, when they see a chemical, they have a long hand, they stretch it out like this, they grab the chemical and destroy it. That's a white blood cell. People with autoimmune disease, migraines and all that, have a lack of this mechanism. They don't have a good defense system to protect them against chemicals. This is a white blood cell attacking, uh, this is a, a white blood cell attacking so many chemicals at one time. In one time, the, all the round, the round thing. And this is an auto, uh, this is a cell extending its hand all the way down to, to engulf something and eat it away. This is real pictures, by the way, electron micro microscope. So you can see what we talk about is in reality is happening inside your body when you're sitting right now. So you've got to keep your defense up, because if you don't, you will lose in the end. Uh, there is something I want to mention, very, very important in, uh, in, in my practice. We don't usually just stick with the, uh, uh, we don't stick with only vitamins. We also, once we measure and find the person have an autoimmune disease, we'll give them extra intravenous immune globulins. Because we find out that the immune globulin goes inside, help the immune system fight back and build it up. And that's what we use for allergy and, and the multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis and migraine headaches and fibromyalgia, the same thing used for all these people was great success. And then the last thing I want to mention here is uh, before we talk about thing, what kind, uh, what kind of food supplements that important for autoimmune disease? Every vitamin is important. But Shackley have a specific products that does help the immune system. One of them called Nutraferon. And Nutraferon was developed by Shackley Company and was invented by a scientist belonged to them in Japan that find that it does fight hepatitis C with great success. But in my practice, I find it also to help cancer patient and allergy patients and other. So when people say, if it's an autoimmune, should I take some immune products? Yes. There is a bad immune and there's a good immune. You want to give good immune to, to fight the bad immune. You, you got the point of the DNA and all the stuff we talked about. So I have here some, uh, some, pro some things to talk about. This one here w was because the call I got from Joyce last night about soy protein, but, uh, but at least uh, this paper mentioned that, that soy protein does lots of good to the body and I don't want to spend more time in it because we mentioned it in the last lecture. I wanted to, to talk about, I'm going to be selective on the products I'm going to talk about. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the, um, the optiflora. The optiflora is a digestive enzymes that lots of company makes. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the uh, acidophilus digestive enzyme. Uh, it's, uh, it's acidophilus and bifidophilus bacteria that that lots of companies make to help the digestive system. 70% of your immune system in your digestive system. 
And if that, if you make your digestive system strong, you will benefit. And here we talked about the aptoflora. It does so many things inside the body, include, uh, it, it increases immunity, it increases the good bacteria, it, it binds uh, with or carcinogen, it, it eats the bad, uh, bad bacteria in the, in, the, in the stomach. And the difference between, I found out, between the Shackley Optiflora and other uh, products is really the way they made it. That's the only difference. They all look, they're all the same in the market, but the way they manufactured it is different from anybody else. Because they selected young bacteria, not all bacteria. And number two, they covered it with anti-acid coating, so it goes through the stomach without dying. Number three, when it multiplies, because it's young, it multiplies in a very high amount. And the amount of aptoflora you should take if you just started, is one three times a day for one month, followed by one twice a day next month, followed by once a day the rest of your life. That was fast. Okay, I have another product to talk about before, before I uh, get tired. This called Defend and resist. And with that one, I wanted to read it for you because there's so many of them. Defend and resist is made from uh, four products. Made from echinacea, black elderberry, and the, 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 the large tree, and the zinc. The echinacea is being known to stimulate the immune system. Increases the white blood, good white blood cells. Increases the T cells that fights back. Increases the natural killer cells. And increases also the helper cells by making more interferon. It helps to fight virus and bacteria and chemicals and, and many other pro, many things. It also destroy mutant cells. The cells in the body that mutated, it destroyed them. Uh, those cells can become cancer. Uh, it, it can be taken, uh, defender resist, every two to three hours in the first day, uh, then two to three times a day until your problem, autoimmune problem, improves. That is the echinacea part. The black elderberry part has more benefits than you know. Even the word defender resist is, you think, just for defending, L listen to what defender resist also can do. It has tannins, it has many tannins, it helps the intestine uh, in digestion, it gets rid of sore throats, it has many flavonoids that it helps to, to decrease the mutation inside the cell. It has zinc, zinc in it, which promote healing it helps also to fight infections and viral disease. It helps the bone and the hair and the nails, and uh, it helps to prevent acne, eczema, and uh, lots of other problems. And that one product I want to be sure to co that I covered tonight. Then I will go back to the first page again, which I wrote to eight years ago, and tell you another product. That product I want to talk about is osteokinetic. Did we talk about that last time or, or no? We did? Oh, joint health. Okay, we just brought it away. We have plenty of stuff to talk about anyway. I didn't remember, so I, we talked about the peppermint. And we will talk, did we talk about the garlic last time? No. no, okay. Let's put the garlic right here and talk about it. This all intended to teach you how to respond to people and how to talk about a specific products. What do they do? The garlic is lily family. Uh, it has the active ingredient called alanine, 
which changes to allicin when exposed to oxygen give you the, uh, the odor of garlic. That's why it, when it's garlic itself, it doesn't smell bad, but once you break it, it does. Uh, it has a lots of uh, alkaloids in it. It's mentioned above right here, uh, like arine, uh, methyl arine, and diethinine, anti-cancer, and polyphenol, all of this stuff. What does garlic do? It decreases blood pressure. It lowers cholesterol. It decreases clotting, blood clots. It decreases flu. It improves irritable bowel syndrome. It improves cancer. It um, it it's, it's, uh, improves uh, arteriosclerosis. It's a natural chelation. It decreases DNA mutation after exposure to it. And then the one after that, the GLA, as long as it's the same page, we just keep going, and then we will finish with that. GLA is made of two products in it. One is the GLA itself, omega-6, and also sunflower uh, extract. It, GLA is, is very important because essential fatty acid it's a prostaglandin inhibitor. Prostaglandin is the substance called inflammation. So it does inhibit uh, inflammation in autoimmune disease. It decreases cholesterol, it decreases heart problem, it decreases eczema, and also it, it's, um, uh, it decreases itching in people who have psoriasis. Uh, GLA can do that. Uh, the uh, GLA also blocks uh, prostaglandin, like I mentioned, it improves rheumatoid arthritis, it helps fibrocystic disease, it, it's very important in diabetic neuropathy. People who have numbness from diabetes, GLA helps with that. Imp it helps multiple sclerosis patients. Uh, ALS patients also get help with that, stroke patients help with that. People who have hypersensitivity in their skin, it also improves that. Improves also lupus in place of steroid. It does replace arachnidic acid, that's why it's so important. It is excellent anti-inflammatory. And then the other one, uh, the sunflower omega-3 in it, which is, have the same benefits. Okay, I'm going to be stopping right now, and uh, I'm gonna be taking uh, some questions start from the front to the back, but also I'm gonna give you my phone number that if you have any question, you can call me on my cellular phone, which is uh, the top one right here, and this is my office right there if you have special questions, okay? I think it is hour and 20 minutes, thank you very much, and we're gonna take some questions. Yes. Um, I have like severe um, fatigue. Where I mean, I'm sleeping almost most of my day. Uh huh. No energy. So I'm doing. I'm using soy protein right now, and I have a different type of apicora. There's something you know that GLA is <laughs> for. Okay. Let me repeat the question so that people in the back can hear it. Okay. The young lady here said she has severe fatigue, and she's taking protein and doing the best she can. Is anything specific in Shackley uh, will help fatigue? Fatigue is a symptom. It's a symptom. It's just the body is telling you, I'm tired, I don't have energy. It can be caused by many things. It can be caused by viruses. It can be caused by toxicity. It can be caused by poor immune system. It can be caused by hormonal problems, circulation problem. So it's very difficult to specifically say what causes fatigue in, 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 uh, in any person. However, I would like to say to you, if you follow the, what I say tonight in the, in the lecture, that uh, take care of yourself, it takes about two years before you notice really good results. But if you wanna get to the root of the problem, we be glad in my office to do analysis and find out what's behind it. We can do that. Yes. Um, I have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune. Mm -hmm. I write, 
Again, it's Hashimoto thyroiditis. It's a, it's a disease that the thyroid glands attack the antibodies. Same thing like lupus and anything else. Everything we mentioned will work. Uh, because the, to correct the autoimmune, it may be, maybe the mutation was genetic and maybe acquired. We don't know. But what can we do for somebody who have autoimmune, like Hashimoto thyroiditis like you? Number one, we want to prevent what caused the Hashimoto from attacking other organs. We want it to prevent it from attacking other glands or, or attack the brain or the heart or whatever. We want, that's number one goal for any physician to do is to prevent that, to protect the patient from that it doesn't get worse. However, if you have that and you, uh, what we have done with, with that is given all the Shackley supplements, like especially omega-3 would be great for you, and then, uh, and then if you want any further intervention, we have what we call immune globulin to help the immune system to boost it up. But, that, but Hashimoto definitely is an autoimmune disease and it has to be treated uh, carefully. Any other questions? Yes. I have a member whose daughter is, uh, has localized scleroderma. And I understood that the systemic scleroderma is not immune, but I don't know about the local scleroderma. And we're just putting empty cell products on the affected skin area. But uh, obviously, there, there needs to be more. Okay, I'm going to repeat the question for you in the back. She have a friend that have scleroderma and the scleroderma of the skin, and she was told by somebody that the scleroderma of the skin is not systemic, is not really as bad as the systemic, and is that something to worry about or not? Number one, I treat scleroderma both in the skin and treat the scleroderma in systemic. Systemic scleroderma is just the scleroderma that attack the lung, and the other attack the skin. They're both dangerous. Scleroderma of the skin, like Hashimoto, we have to take any sign, fatigue, or any sign the body gives us, and we have to attack back very strong. We cannot allow any disease to advance, because once it does that, it takes over the body, and it's too late. You follow me? There's only one way the body can communicate with you. It's pain, fatigue, headache, you know, this is the messages the body can do. After that, the body will say, well, I can do nothing about it, then it's up to you. So I will, I will say that definitely if I have scleroderma, I would worry about it. Yes? What's happening, happening politically with the thrust we have uh, the FDA have to come through? Uh, the FDA, the, the Congress have passed, the, law, she, the lady, young lady says what happened with the new proposal that, that the FDA want to have the food supplements approved by doctors only. Uh, that has passed the Congress and, uh, and passed the Senate both. Okay, however, there is tremendous resistance going on in the society, people in the, and society no longer Republican Democrats. They become who's for me, who's against me. You follow me? And people getting smarter uh, because what we have told the Congress when we, I was there, we're going to expose every person voted for something. Like everybody voted for the war, we're gonna say, okay, all of these people voted for the war. And I am, as a doctor, I'm anti-war. So I'm not going to vote for anybody who had voted for a war. I'm going to pick a farmer or a mechanic or, or somebody who else who never voted for anything. You follow me? We must make changes ourselves. I, it has resistance, but I don't know what's going to happen. All I can say, it can be a double-edged thing. It might be good. Uh, it might be good that junkie companies will go away. Uh, that and, and good for Shackley because that's a strong company and uh, it might be bad that will affect everybody so I really cannot answer that question in the back yes um, 
Our eight-year-old daughter has a life-threatening allergy to Uh, so eight years old have threatened allergies to soy protein means her immune system, something wrong with it. I will definitely, if it's threatening, I will avoid soy, like peanuts. You know, some people will touch peanuts and they have allergic reaction to it and they die from it. i be a, a careful with that. Uh, however, I don't see anything scientifically to explain it. All I can say, she is born with an immune disorder that she cannot tolerate soy protein. Eventually, she's going to have problem with other products in the, in the world. So that's a good sign to start her on food supplements and less chemicals and, and just get her a good diet and fresh diet and vegetables. And hopefully, by the age of 14, she will overcome it. And I think she might overcome it by the age of 14. That's when the immune system reach the maximum. So the future is good for her. Yes? What's the best product for rheumatoid arthritis? What's our best Shackley products? Uh, among Shackley products, the pain relief complex is probably will be number one. The pain relief complex, the osteokinetic, the, the joint health. That will be number one. Yes, Joyce. You didn't really emphasize for the new people the importance of the antioxidants. You didn't mention them by name. Uh, we only have limited time to talk about everything in one lecture, and I can do that because uh, uh, there are v DVDs, tapes, and videotapes. So we can cover that, but I'm going to go over, uh, you know, the some of them. The antioxidant, the number one is vitamin C, and the good dose of that is between 1,000 to 6,000 milligrams a day. It depends on the problem. And vitamin E, and uh, the good dose is between 400 unit to 2,000 units. And vitamin B complex, which I'm going to be talking about in the next lecture, so I'm not going to mention it right now. And the beta carotene, which we're not going to mention it in the future, is a strong antioxidant. Flavomax is also a strong antioxidant. And omega-3 is a strong antioxidant. And the dose from that, we have a whole lecture on that, that between uh, 2 to 20 a day. It depends on the problem we're dealing with. So if we're talking about autoimmune disease and antioxidant, this is probably the range. Beta carotene probably two to four a day, flavor max between one to three a day. Any other questions? Yes. Is the beta carotene max? yes. Yes. <clears throat> My sister has been presenting with the autoimmune system for about two years and on and on cyclically with the um, steroids, but she does not test positive. Well, blood tests are not accurate. If your symptoms suggest autoimmune, you have it. Just like somebody sneezing and have allergy, that's enough. We don't have to do allergy tests. That's from steroid, right? The steroids have, have kept the swelling of beta. Now she's off the steroids. She's up. You call me by phone. We can discuss it on the phone. Okay. Thank you very much and good night.